Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Writers Infusion. I'm your host Susan. I'm here with Dave, Jen, Julie, and Ed. And we are here today to read an excerpt from a short story. It's historical fiction. It's called A Dawn of Peace by Tom Heeren. Tom is from Kansas. I'm going to read a quick synopsis. It's very quick. It's only a sentence. And then Ed is going to read the excerpt for us. The story focuses on a mother of three children who faces the haunting reality of the end of the Great War on November 11, 1918. Mary Hopkins, recently widowed, was knitting a scarf for one of her best friend's son who was at the front when noise outside interrupted the peace of her study. Her heart beat heavily as she put the knitting aside on the sofa and went to the window. Mary slowly opened the window and leaned forward to observe her neighbors going out of their houses to find out what was going on. Not sure what was going on, Mary closed the window and pulled the curtain shut. She was overwhelmed with sadness and guilt as she walked to the door. Bad memories caught Mary shaking hands on the door. A peel of sweat began to appear around the face. Mary, a beautiful woman of 35 years old, with blonde hair arranged in a knot, panted heavily, imagining the worst. My God, what's wrong with me? Am I imagining things out of the world? Mary thought as she struggled with the knob trying to open it. She pled to God for guidance while looking up to the ceiling, but it never appeared. Mary returned to the sofa and broke into tears. After 10 to 15 minutes, she composed herself as she stood up. Mary came to the door, getting ready for a new day. The passing of Mary's husband, Alfred, at the Marne battle left the Hopkins family with a great loss. Two teenage sons, Peter and Henry, and one 10-year-old daughter, Kathleen, helped their mother deal with the tragedy themselves. Despite the loss of their father and husband, the family avoided poverty through investments made by Alfred, who worked as a vice president of a local bank. When the Great War began on 4 August 1914, Alfred decided to join the army to fight for king and country. Two years later, he lost his life due to shrapnel hitting him on the head, causing him to fall to the ground. Thinking about the tragic events caused Mary to grieve more. After a while, she descended down the stairs, humming a popular wartime tune, keeping the home fires burning. The front hall was welcomed with numerous bouquets scattered across the room. Mary stood in the center, contemplating the tranquility. Mr. Johnston, the butler, came out of the back stairs door, carrying a note on a salver. He bowed to his mistress. Good morning, ma'am, Mr. Johnston said. I have a message from your brother. He's at the war ministry and will be home shortly. Anything else I can do for you? Mary shook her head and took the message on the salver. She scanned it briefly and returned it to the salver. Mary knew that Peter, her younger brother, was working at the war ministry as a counselor to the minister of war. He lost his wife, Angela, of 15 years to the dreadful Spanish flu in September 1918. They had two children, one 18-year-old son attending Oxford and a 22-year-old daughter working as a VAD nurse at the front. The house had three children and two adults in all, and both Mary and Peter had to master the responsibility of raising them. Mary sighed and looked at her black dress, still six inches from the floor, representing the new style of late 1918. No, thank you, Johnston, Mary replied. Very well, ma'am. May I leave now? The butler asked. Of course, you may go. Thank you very much. The butler bowed and took the cue. Mary marched to the sitting room to reflect on the strange events outside 152 Eaton Place, her and Peter's home. She took one of the magazines from a small table and went to a sofa. Mary leaned back, flipping through the pages of Women's Weekly for an article to read. The clock above the fireplace showed 11 a.m. Johnston, the war is over. Can you get the servants downstairs to the front door? Peter's voice echoed in the front hall. Mary's head jerked from the magazine, causing her to be surprised. Mary put the magazine away and rose to open the door. She saw a deliriously happy Peter, her cook, Paula, and Katie, the two housemaids. Mary was both embarrassed and shocked at the spontaneous sight. She tiptoed behind Peter, causing the housemaids to curtsy fast before their disapproving mistress. Johnston was rather restrained in controlling his happiness at the happy news. He stood near the backstairs door. Sorry about your brother hugging us. Have you heard the news? Katie asked nervously. The war's over, ma'am. Aren't you happy for all of us? Mary looked at the happy servants in shell shock and felt lightheaded. Peter sensed that his older sister was near fainting and crossed to help her from fainting. Mary collapsed before Peter, bursting into tears. My God, is it true that the war is over? 
Mary sobbed as she held Peter's arms. Yes, sister, we're at peace at last. Do get up and we'll have champagne to toast to peace. Johnston, would you get a bottle of champagne and two goblets for Mrs. Hopkins and me in the library? <coughs> Very well, sir, Johnston said, <coughs> bowing to the siblings. He went back stairs, the other servants following him. Do you want to cut it for a second? With the household <coughs> staff gone, Peter and Mary looked at each other. The siblings walked to the library <coughs> next door and entered it. The library has a small table, few chairs, and three high bookcases on the right and left walls. They contained many books from many centuries and few paperback books. In the center there was a French window with doors leading to the balcony. Mary and Peter walked to the table and embraced each other. Mary looked up from the hug and looked at Peter. Wow, we're lucky that we survived the Great War and the Spanish flu, Mary replied as she held her brother tightly. As for your wife, we'll remember her from time to time, right? Peter sadly nodded and released Mary from the embrace. He walked to the window and opened the doors and looked at the crowds gathering in the square. <coughs> Mary joined her grieving brother on the balcony. She looked out at the happy atmosphere, feeling relieved. Mary could not believe her eyes. The war was over now. She left Peter and walked to the bookcase with her beloved Alfred's portrait on the fourth shelf. He was in his official uniform of the Wiltshire Regiment. She smiled at the portrait, sobbing. Thank God the horrible war is over. Your children and I will have peace at last. I wish you'd be here to celebrate the special occasion with us, my dear. But you're in heaven with God. I hope you're proud of our accomplishments, Mary said, as she wiped away her tears. There you go. Mary touched the picture with tender love. She returned to the balcony and looked at the happy crowds. Mary touched Peter's arm. Are you okay, Mary asked gently. I'm fine, thank you. God, I can't believe that we men have to return to the jobs and the women to being housewives again. What about you, my sister? Mary shrugged at the question. I don't know yet. Maybe I'll join a voluntary organization at the great Ormond Street Hospital for sick children, or something like that. I must occupy myself to help my children and myself. It's hard these days, you know. Peter nodded and turned to observe the happy scene. Mary mouthed excuse me to him and walked inside. She sighed as she took her family King James Bible out of the right bookcase and put it on a nearby table. Trying to find something to help her understand the mystery of peace, Mary fumbled through the pages to find a suitable scripture that deals with peace. She found Romans and scanned its verses until she came to 1513. Mary read the verse aloud. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, <coughs> that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. She repeated it over and over to make her understanding clear. Mary smiled to herself as she put the King James Bible away and raised her eyes to God. Thank God for making me aware of Romans 15, 13. Peace is what we should need as we celebrate the end of the Great War. Praise to God. Okay. I am <coughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> it's getting over being sick, so I apologize. You're not getting Tom. over. No. I'm still, still I'm just in the middle of getting everyone else sick. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to start this off by saying um, the, first, the first couple of pages, I understood that um, Mary's sitting there knitting and whatnot, but I kind of got lost right away as to where she was even in the house. Mm -hmm. And when she went to get up and open the door, I thought that she was opening the front door, but then it wasn't, it was the bedroom door. So I was just kind of confused. Um, but I'm gonna, if I take a step back even from that, I want to take a moment to talk about setting. And right now, you have this woman who's sitting there. She's obviously very upset. Her husband has died. Um, and when you started off with Mary Hopkins, recently widowed, was knitting a scarf for one of her best friend's sons, blah, 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 even though it says at the front, it's almost like a happy thing. I go, like, here she is, she's knitting. And so if I were to start it off like a tiny bit differently, I might say some, something like, Mary sat in the living room, or wherever she's at, the bedroom, upstairs, tell us where she is, her knitting untouched, staring out the window. Just something a little bit different so that we understand that she's... Different mood. Yes, mm. a totally different mood, because yeah. even though you end up understanding what's going on, for some reason that first sentence started off totally different for me than I think you meant it to start off. And then from there, I needed a better idea of where she was in the house. I was kind of confused. And and yeah. then I'll stop. I mean, it, it's interesting that you, you talk about the setting because it's not clear to me until a few pages in that they're in England mm. and that these are very wealthy people, okay? 
Uh, and I think that raises another issue because I don't think they, they speak like upper class British <coughs> people. They use a lot of uh, common expressions and a lot of American expressions. Like wow. So I like just wow. wrote that yes. one down oh. too. Oh. I, I said, one. was there even wow in 1918? Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting. Uh, no, so uh, I, I marked it in a few places, but I think it would be good to, to go through and you know, make them sound like uh, British people because right now I, I don't think they do very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree. So it's, yeah, it, it's kind of a, a strange atmosphere given the way that they're speaking. And as part of setting and mood, even when you get to the second paragraph, the last, you know, sh here she is, she's sad, she's about to walk to the door. Mary, a beautiful woman of 35 years old with blonde hair arranged in a knot, panted heavily, imagining the worst. That's a lot. Yes. Now, first of all, if she's panting heavily or she's imagining the worst, I really don't care if her hair's tied in a knot, right? Put that in somewhere else. I, you you want to stick with the mood, but then you're taking me away from that by describing what her hair looks like. Plus, you don't know what the worst is. What, what is the worst? I don't yes. know. And that's where I got kind of lost, because th this noise interrupted her knitting. And then you never, the noise just kind of goes she, away. She goes to open the door. But she doesn't. And then she's overwhelmed with emotion. We don't know why. She closes guilt. the door and opens a magazine. And, yeah. Right, there's guilt. Yes. There's something wrong there. Just yeah, there's casually. guilt and sadness, but yeah. we still <coughs> don't know why. Um, and then we never hear anything else about, about the right. noise. Right, and, um, and we don't know what the noise is. I mean, it could it could be voices, it could be sirens, it right. could be explosions. Right. Yeah, right. We She's have no totally idea. Left it. If, if I yeah. heard the noise, it just goes it's away. Gone. That's right. Right. If um, I could tie in the wow, I wrote start with a figurative or literal bang. I mean, start with a bang. Really pull us in. I wasn't so yeah. moved that Mary is sitting there knitting. A loud noise disturbed Mary, blah, 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 blah. Or what did the noise sound like? Because right. we need to exactly. know. She goes to the door, and then it's a few paragraphs farther down. Oh um, my God, what's wrong with me? She struggled with the knob trying to open it, but the antecedent of it is door and it's a few lines up. So it, she really needs to tighten mm -hmm. that, jump into it. Go out the door or don't. Then she sits with a right. magazine, as Dave pointed out. She looks out the window. She doesn't. She's wondering about her neighbors, but she backs off. I don't. And then we're hearing about the family. Yes. The family yes. and, you know, her, bro her brother and their kids and, and who they are. And there's just a whole big description. Yeah. In the meantime, we know the war's about to be over. So none of that really matters yet. And then the, the brother's wife. So he says he lost his wife. So at, at this point, I don't know what year it is yet, um, um, but he says his wife, he lost his wife, Angela, of 15 years. He had just lost her. But, sh but they have children, 18 years old and 22 years old, so how is that? Oh, Excellent point. Good math. I didn't even think that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch unless that. They have didn't young know was going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> unless they weren't married before they had oh, the kids, but I doubt that. Those, right. are Mary, those are Mary's kids. The, their kids are young. No. 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 no, Mary has two. No, Mary has two. two. I, that's interesting. Yeah, Mary has two teenage He's, sons and a 10 year old daughter. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Well, by another marriage, maybe? Yes. But it says, wow. wouldn't that he be lost his wife? No, there's no they going had on there. another twist. In yeah, the they had two right? children. So, right. and, and how long has she been dead? Yeah, right. So, right. I, as I read on, I realized, okay, if this is November 1918, then she's only been dead for a couple months. But, uh, um, like, if you would say that two months ago, you know, um, and Angela had died. Another example, too, of going back and forth, not staying in the moment. At the, the second page, when Mr. Johnson comes in and says, I have a message from your brother, then there's a whole paragraph about that, like what you're talking about, about the brother. And by the time she's yes. done telling us about the children and the whole bit, I forgot she was talking to anybody. Right. Right? Right. right. So you and have to stay in the she moment. She never says what the note says. Right. What's That's a silver? Right. Oh, I, I don't know, but it's a silver tray. tray. It's, it's a silver right. tray. It's beautiful. It word three times. times. Uh, there was a lot of repetition. Yeah. I hate to say it. There okay. were a lot of happiness on page word three. Yeah. Happy, yeah. I saw. Down happy. In the story, five to seven times, that's a lot of happy. So do be careful. I marked up the uh, yeah. the redundancy. The word When I started reading this, I approached it as though it were a novel. My error. <clears throat> I'll put up with a lot of the drivelly kind of stuff if it's going to lead to a novel length excitement. <coughs> this is a short story. Oh, that's true. Man, you got to hit them on the mm -hmm. first page. Uh, oh, start out with story. the war yeah. is over. So, but this, uh, and maybe I'm wrong. I don't. I don't know the whole story. This is a story of transition. They're going from w wartime suffering to peacetime whatever it brings. We don't know. We've only got five pages. 
-hmm. So that is difficult to do in a short story, I think. Mm -hmm. there's, there's not enough time to do it. But I entered this as, uh, as, as if it were a novel, fine, okay, I'll, I'll put up with But no, not, not for a short story. You really get, have to nail it on the first page. Right. And, and to your point about this being a short story, I mean, presumably by the end of the story, something changes. I mean, obviously the war ended, so that, that is a change. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but what is changing for the characters? Right. I mean, her husband was dead, he's still mm -hmm. dead. She was taking care of her kids, she's still taking care of her kids. They were rich, she's still rich. What exactly has changed? Yeah, there's nothing That's a great point. For this, there's, there's no problem again. Their, their occupations to end. will change, but they talk so casually about that. Oh, I think I might go but get what, a job. What are, is her occupation? See, that's the thing. Right. We don't know what her situation right. is at the beginning of the story to know how it's different at the end. Very is she point. not volunteering now? Why would she not volunteer during the war and start volunteering after the war? Right. Yes. I, Good I, point. I, but, I don't yeah, get what the and, change And the is. volunteering part I didn't get. Uh, I didn't even get that they were rich. For, I don't know why. It took me half the story but to it get says, that. But it's hard these days, you know, after <laughs> she talked to And if she's volunteering, that's not going to help. <laughs> right. right. I mean, how's that going to help the income of the family if she's volunteering? Well, I thought it was weird for her to even say it's hard these days when she's, I mean, I know her husband servants, died. Oh, yeah, she's doing right. quite nicely. So so it's so it's so everything's flowers. relative. Yeah. You know, it's all relative. Flowers. But then what do we care? <laughs> <laughs> they have to use the, to use the second uh, best yeah, silver. Yeah, you know. I did mention redundancy before. I do want to point mm -hmm. you to page one, and there are some word choices I would rethink. Haunting reality of the end of the Great War. I would think it's pretty awesome that the Great War ended. I don't know, I used the word haunting in the summary, yeah. but more importantly, I think, Paragraph two, a peel of sweat began to appear around mm -hmm. the face. This is a lovely word, but it should be a bead of sweat, a peel of laughter. Peel of a bell. You know what? I missed yeah. it. Well, when I think it's the wrong peel. It's pe it peel. Oh, right. Pe so I, I thought of it like a peel, like it, it coated her face almost like it could oh, peel right. off. Oh, really? But it's still, it's a, it's a yeah. homophone. It's the wrong no, no, that's peel. True. It's that's true. Well, you know what? I Does know. anyone, yes. I, the second, when you read it today, I was fine. But the first time I read it, I didn't realize that Peter was a brother. <gasps> There's another Peter. Was? There's another Peter. Oh, One there of the is? Sons is Peter. So I was very I was confused about the son very and nephew. Oh, you're right. Who she was son Peter yeah. also. I didn't catch that, that yes, the son yes. was Peter. I know, and then when I the other Peter brother came really. home, I thought he was in the house already, yeah. and I thought it was really strange that the first thing he says, which is on the top of my page three, Johnson, the war is over. Can you get the servants downstairs to the front door? I mean, how about... I don't know, looking for a sister or... Gather the children, it just seems the children? So, it just seems so strange that he wasn't yes. looking for the rest of the family yes. as soon as he walks into the door. Yes. And it, and he sent, but he sent a note, and then five minutes later he's home, so why did he send the note if he's going to be home in five minutes? Right, I yes. know, it's strange. just kind of... Yes. And, and unless, you know, hours passed, but that's not, not clear. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of... Uh, there's too much play-by-play. -play. Mary grabbed a magazine. Mary sat on the couch. Then she leaned back. Then she flipped through the magazine looking for an article. You don't need all the verbs. Right. Cool. You don't need all the verbs. Um, yeah. And I would do a search for the word look because you, you use the word look a lot. A mm -hmm. lot of people are looking at each other and, and, right. and you don't need you don't need the play-by-play. -play. It just it slows things down. And then when her pro she's talking to her brother at the end, um, First, I didn't feel like th I didn't feel like there was enough of a reaction from her, but yes. she was saying at the end, "I'm fine, thank you, God. I can't believe that we men have to return to the jobs and the women to being housewives again." So it just seemed like such an awkward thing for him to say. I mean, yes. right now you're just all in shock. The war's over. They should be elated. You're thankful. Yes. Right, elated. Why are they not elated? And, and, then, then, was, and then at the end, that's right. So well, you're it's supposed to be, be bittersweet for them. But it just seems so strange people. at the end, right? That. But at the very end, when you're probably still in the throes of this, she's saying, trying to find something to help her understand the mystery of peace. What's the mystery of peace? I said there's peace. no mystery. The and then she's the mystery. pulling out a book while all this stuff's going on well, around her and looking. Yeah, maybe enough. she's looking for inner peace, so although the world is at peace, she has still lost her husband. Is this simply a house uh, shrouded in depression? Yes. This one died, and that one died, and this one died, and big deal, the war's over. My life is not going to get better. Is that the story? I don't know. Oh, that could I, be. Yeah. I don't know what the story is. Yeah. Big deal. And then she ends up committing suicide at the end or something. You know, it's just to complete the, the right. cycle. I right. don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know where we're going with this. That's the yeah. problem. I wrote this as an unbelievable time in world history. Have your story reflect that because I don't feel this is remarkable. The family's remarkable. Their, their reactions aren't remarkable. They're kind of dull. And the characters seem two dimensional. I don't mean to offend you. Two dimensional, and they're wading through molasses. They're just moving so slowly. That's a good way to put it. Well, thank you.
Yeah, I, I like the, the time element. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a good, it's a good place to start a story because mm -hmm. something can just explode out of that. Because yes. again, it's a time of transition. You, you, you like get, get that whiplash of effect. Things get going very well after World War I. You know, there's mm -hmm. a wild 20s or whatever it is. That, but it, roaring. Roaring 20s, yeah, yeah. So things got better, certainly. Uh, people weren't dying. Uh, so uh, Until the Depression. Well, then the 30s, that's, uh, yeah, yeah, that was bad. <laughs> really I remember it so well. But <laughs> speaking <laughs> of, we have Angela having died in the uh, Spanish flu. Let's talk about that pandemic. That was massive. Mm. Did anyone else in the household get sick and recover? And how wonderful for them, but how awful that we lost her. And for Mary to say, we'll think about her now and again. Your wife, what? Name yeah. her, Angela. Right. And of course we're going to think about her always. We yeah. from time to time. That threw me. Mm -hmm. I guess I just take that out. Though. That's right. She's gonna have, he's going to have to take out a lot of these elements that you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Because it is a short story right. and you've got to do some study or research or read some mm -hmm. short stories and, and uh, figure out what it is that makes yeah. a successful short story. Inter interesting. Is it Henry James who does the best short stories? Focus. Like the one with the girl and her, the comb in her hair and she, she cuts her hair. Oh Henry. Oh, oh, Henry. Henry. Oh, Henry. oh my gosh, um, the that's Gift of the Magi. The best. Oh, oh, right, right. Best. Oh. So that's a Beautiful. good writer to read yes. for an idea. Paul, yeah. Paul wrote great yeah. short story. Oh. And it's yes. historical. It's historical, Wonderful. too, which mm -hmm. is great. Yes. Like, I loved, I loved some of the details. Like, I liked the detail of how she looked down at her skirt, and it was, you know, six inches higher, you know, the new age of fashion in, in, in 1918. Was that Darren? I liked those details. Because well, I don't know obviously where it was. the skirt was shorter. Was it, it was shorter? Was it higher? Oh, I thought she was fluid length. I I no, tell. she was wearing it. She was trying oh, to be fashion. The floor. So like, I love those ankle. details of, of wow. historical fiction. Um, Johnston can see her ankle. <laughs> the dogs had a dog. Um, I think to Ed's point and to what Dave was just saying about transition, this is a transitional time in history. And if you want to write a short story, then what is changing over that short period right. of time in this family? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and how are they going to be where affected? where they are and where they're, they're going, going to yes. be. Yes, and I yes. think that's the and, uh, biggest thing uh, that you have to do with this. You have story. to focus. Yeah, and he's going really to he's gonna have to sift through it and find out yeah. the important elements because right. you can't have all of these potential, because I thought, again, I was reading it, I thought it was a novel. We have this great expanse right. of family mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we're going to follow segments of these people. No, not in a short story, yeah. man. You get, yeah. you right. get followed up. But yeah. it, it gives me uh, help. Uh, I'm reading a, a, a book of uh, Truman Capote's short stories. Here's the good news. He was a terrific writer. Here's the bad news. Not all his early works were good. <laughs> ah. Some of them, my eyes are rolling back. I said, how can this get published? Well, it's Truman Capote. Well, what's your phrase? Oh, he, he was clearing his throat. throat. He was clearing his throat. throat. He was very good young. Stuff. Yeah, right. Some of them are knee-bucklingly beautiful. Mm. They just knock me out. And now there's a was that the Christmas story one that came up in one episode? Oh, yes, you read well, it, right? Um, yes, we all read it. Oh, yeah, the Christmas memory. Suki, Suki, yes. Suki, yes. Suki, yes. Suki, 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 Well, and there's another one uh, with Suki in it uh, that I just read. Uh, again, that was very good. It, it must... Uh, We're down to one minute, by the way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, uh, I go to a commercial. I got to Anything else you want to bring up? We have about one minute left. Anything else? No, I would just say, you know, overall, just watch the word echo. Um, various sentence starters. A lot of the sentences start with the word Mary. Mm -hmm. um, and just be clear about the sequence of things and how much time has passed. If you're going to yeah. talk about things that happened in the past, how long ago was it? Um, and to Dave's point, um, if it is a short story, I thought it was a novel also. I just, you just made me realize that it's a short story. You do have to kind of peel back the onion here and decide, you know, what's going to stay and what's going to go because all of Elements. this. Yeah, all of this, um, I, I think will just bog down the story. Get to the core of what you're trying to tell. Have you peel the onions great. and bring up tears. That's well, a great way to start yeah. this. Okay, well, we hope that our critique today helped you. Um, thank you for submitting your story. Um, again, this is Tom Heeran from Kansas, which is pretty cool. <laughs> so, and thank you everyone else for joining us today for this episode of Writers Infusion. We will see you next time. Keep writing.